What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we are back with some juicy Destiny 2 Season of Dawn content and news to cover in this video. So we're going to jump in and talk about a bunch of mysterious obelisks on different destinations. We'll talk about the Oblivion, or the mysterious fourth timeline, and some of what we can expect from Saint-14. But we have got more sandbox adjustments to round up, small vendor updates, new event weapons, hidden exotic items, and a roundup of general future content, but also Bungie respond to PvP feedback, they give a few words about trials, and we've got some other things to touch on as we get ready for Imminent Dawn. So guys, I hope you enjoy the video as always, but now let's get into it. First up today, we have more previews for subclass changes that we'll be getting on Tuesday. So this time it is for the Titans, so Bungie first show off a clip of Burning Maul, lasting a good amount of time right there, but also the Roaring Flame perk, which has received a pretty big damage buff. That looks pretty decent at first glance, but Bungie also show off the height of the heavy slam explosion in PvP. You can see hunters leaping over the super, but the flames are shooting up and taking them out. So we've seen previews of the Titan and the Hunter, and presumably before Tuesday, we'll be getting previews of the Warlock as well. So stay tuned to Bungie's social media for that. Now, before we round up more patch changes and adjustments to the game, I thought it would be pretty cool to jump in and talk about Saint-14 and how he really fits into Season of Dawn. So lore suggests that we will be meeting him at different points through time. And so we actually see Saint-14 at different stages. And these are kind of represented by his armor visually, at least. So we see a younger Saint-14 or an earlier version where he's got really basic armor. And you'll also notice the helmet there doesn't seem to have a dent in it. But when we look at a later version of Saint-14, we can see a giant dent in the side of the helmet, which if you didn't know, was obtained when he headbutted a fallen Kel to death. Yeah, this guy's a real Titan. And our first meeting with Saint-14 in game looks like it's going to happen as part of a quest or mission on the week of the 17th of December. Developers did suggest that we'll actually deliver his perfect paradox shotgun to him, but there is another piece of content for Season of Dawn which could link to this, which would be the obelisks. Bungie have said that we'll be fixing the timelines on four different locations by addressing these structures in patrol, and so on week one, Tangled Shore and Mars Obelisks will become available. And we can see that this one on the Tangled Shore does have a bunch of symbols on display, so there could be kind of a puzzle element to this, but it's otherwise possible that these are some kind of event, maybe similar to how Season 8 had the Vex invasions, but we'll have to wait and see on that front. Either way, the Nessus and European Dead Zone Obelisks will drop on week two, which is immediately alongside that legend quest on the roadmap, so Obelisks could definitely be linked to finding Saint-14. But another interesting thing is that we know Mercury has three timelines, we learned that back in Curse of Osiris, but from the trailer footage, we have seen what looks to be a fourth timeline of some sort, and looking at the roadmap, there is a final Sundial boss, Inotam, Oblivion's Triune, who instead of having an elemental form like the other bosses, is decked in just black and white armor, so it does seem entirely reasonable that Oblivion is that fourth timeline. Or, well, the Oblivion, but you know what I mean. But the final thing which is pretty curious is the space that we can see right here with Saint-14. It looks like it's on Mercury. We also see an image with some guardians in front of it here. And there is some speculation that this could actually be Saint-14's ship. And this has been represented in Destiny 2 as Saint-14's Great Pigeon, which was actually an exotic back in Curse of Osiris. Even more interesting is that from some of the new lore Bungie have been posting about Season of Dawn, it appears that in the lighthouse in D1, the ship that was left behind in that space may have actually belonged to Saint-14. So there is a little bit of speculation that the location we're seeing Saint-14 in right here could actually be the original Trials Lighthouse location from back in D1. I'd be really curious to hear any thoughts you have about that, but... It does look like if we get lucky, Saint-14 could have some kind of vendor location in the game, and that hangar door that we're seeing could actually be his ship, which is pretty cool. Now though, let's cover more game updates, vendor changes, event weapons, exotic items, and more. So initially, DMG gives a quick update about Xur. And so firstly, Xur will not be updated to feature random rolls in Season of Dawn. And that means that all of the armor that Xur has for direct purchase will continue to feature collection rolls. However, Xur will have the updated exotic engram. And with the engram, once you have all of the weapons in the game, you'll only get randomly rolled exotic armor. And so for players in the end game, actually the new exotic engram will be a pretty good way to hunt better stat rolls and different affinities on exotic armor pieces. And so essentially the main change to Xur in Season of Dawn is that he will have the updated exotic and fated engram which have been collapsed into one new exotic item. Up next though, on the subject of feedback about vendors, 
and some of the armor sets that are available at different tower vendors. DMG did say last season we were getting feedback that players wanted armor 2.0 variants of older Vanguard and Crucible armor and previously featured Iron Banner armor sets. Of course, in Season of Dawn, we are going to be getting the vanilla Iron Banner armor from Destiny 2, which we also got in Season of Opulence. But of course, this time it's going to be an armor 2.0 variant, and that does either way mean that that armor set has been reprised twice now. And so that's one thing, but DMG also says that at Shadowkeep launch, Vanguard and Crucible feature Destiny 2 launch sets, and these will be updated to Forsaken sets in Season of Dawn. So that's something to bear in mind right there. The current Vanguard and Crucible featured armor is going to be updated to the ones that we got in Forsaken, but as armor 2.0 versions when Dawn launches next week. And so there is a minor vendor update there, but of course Bungie are slowly reprising sets and then re-reprising sets sometimes when there are systematic changes. So it's definitely an interesting conversation and be sure to give us your thoughts about it below. It does, however, look like we're potentially going to get some new Iron Banner weapons for Season 9. So if you look at the roadmap right here, you can see one of the players has a bow. There is also what appears to be a new hand cannon and potentially a shotgun there too. And considering these are being shown off on the Iron Banner image that also has the relevant armor for Season of Dawn, Hopefully they are going to be new Iron Banner weapons. It definitely suggests that that will be the case. And so that will be positive. Something else that they didn't talk about in this week at Bungie, which was our final kind of patch note preview for Season of Dawn, is that there will actually be new ritual weapons for Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit in Season of Dawn. So despite the fact that we have no idea what they're going to be, we've at least got confirmation that new ritual weapons will be a thing on Tuesday. On top of this, Bungie confirmed a power increase of just 10 for the power and pinnacle cap. So 960 will be the new power cap and 970 will be the pinnacle cap, which is a fairly small jump. And I haven't seen a lot of feedback about this one, so I'm definitely curious to hear your thoughts on the power changes going into Season of Dawn. For a couple of other updates that we haven't heard about yet, a player was complaining about the muzzle flash on the Archaeologic Auto Rifle. Of course, that's the one from the Lectern in Shadowkeep. And we got a minor patch note preview that they have reduced the Archaeologic's muzzle blast size when aiming. So that should be a minor visual improvement for that weapon. And on top of this, they say that they fixed a rare issue where the question mark quest from the Mission of Mysterious Disturbance could get stuck in the inventory, and it has been removed from affected players. So at least that one will be sorted if it's affected you. Now, though, an interesting thing about a few upcoming exotic items. Players did point out that one of the sparrows in the Eververse preview this week is actually one that doesn't appear to be available in the game whatsoever. And it's this one right here, which is actually in the database, so it's called the Magneton Trust. It shows a season of Undying Icon, but apparently that's an error. And this exotic was pulled from this season, but is going to be available in a future season. So we are looking at some random seasonal exotic drops that probably will come from Eververse, because there are a few others that run alongside this one in the database, which also haven't showed up in the game. So there is the friendly fire shell. This one looks kind of like one of the spiders associates on the Tangled Shore. And then there's the Blast Chariot, which is another exotic sparrow, and the Nephilim Toaster, a fairly basic looking exotic ship right there. And once again, since many of these items will probably come from Eververse, bear in mind we are going to see some changes to silver and bright dust purchases. So Bungie said that right now, around 50% of the Eververse stuff in Season 8 has been available for bright dust, and the rest has been exclusively for silver, but they are going to be upping that to 80% bright dust items in Season of Dawn, and that means that only 20% of all the stuff in Eververse can be sold for silver, and so that's a reasonably significant change right there. On top of this, they're also adding bright dust bounties to timed events like Dawning and Crimson Days, which is pretty interesting. And so when those events are up, it will be an opportunity to actually stack up on bright dust that you could use for those potential couple of months between events. We'll have to see. A few folks have pointed out that we've actually got Crimson Days Sparrows on display on the roadmap for that event. Some folks are wondering whether Crimson SRL could be a thing, and especially with the Sparrow that Bungie have actually taken out of this season, having pretty similar colors to SRL. It has definitely made players curious, but if you're a fan of SRL, like I am, I think it's probably better that we don't get too excited unless Bungie announce something. Before we round up some final things though, on the point of Bungie's reveal and how much they showed for Season of Dawn earlier this week, Cosmo did say that the point was to give you a glimpse of the sundial, show you some of the new armor and weapons, and talk a little bit about Saint 14 and the new artifact, but we didn't want to spoil everything, and as Deej said in the stream, the rest of that stuff we're going to have to discover in game, even to the point where they're not kind of showing us ritual weapons before launch and things like that, so I think the reality reality is that we know this content drop is not going to be as substantial as what we've seen in previous seasonal drops, or at the very least is going to be handled differently, right? So I think really it's one of those where we're just going to have to wait and see what the content's like next week. But absolutely I agree, you know, when we're looking at a live reveal, typically they have quite a lot of content in them, and Bungie haven't really done live reveals for annual pass or seasonal drops that much. 
and the amount of content that they tend to have is probably the main reason for that, so we'll have to see if it's something they continue doing for season pass drops in the future. Now though, finally let's round up a few pieces of PvP feedback and responses from Bungie. Of course, there has been a building expectation for a potential return of Trials, and TMG responded to a thread about the continued lack of Trials, but also PvP and Bungie's commitment to that in general. So, for Trials, DMG said that we've had a few blog posts talking about Trials of the Nine being on indefinite hiatus, and Luke speaking to what worked and what didn't in the Director's Cut blog articles. This season, Elimination is returning as a static mode that you can play at any time. We've collected a lot of feedback from Crucible Labs over the last season, and we'll continue to look at how the mode plays this season Season with upcoming sandbox changes and other things. Please continue to sound off with what works and what doesn't, maps, mode settings, weapons, armor, etc. And so currently that's the kind of answer we're getting for Trials. You know, based on all the things that Luke Smith did say and Bungie have said in general, and the fact that they've been developing Elimination, I think it's still possible that they're working on something with Trials, but I can feel that that core frustration with the PvP community obviously is the amount of updates and relevant content to PvP, but I guess it's also that uncertainty about the future kind of endgame for it in general. Cosmo did say that they've spoken to the team about increasing certain currency and material drops inside of PvP. The example was for Ascendant Shards, you know, dropping on Valor resets or something like that. And Cosmo said nothing is set in stone, so we shouldn't necessarily expect changes like that for Season of Dawn, but the teams are aware of the request, so hopefully even minor quality of life and kind of reward changes are things that we can see kind of soon. And DMG did give a broader response to a lot of the feedback in the moment. He said at Shadowkeeper launch, we refreshed the Crucible nodes, added a solo playlist for comp, refactored glory gains, and started curating Crucible maps to pull ones that weren't performing well out of rotation. This was the beginning of our work on Crucible over the next year, and we are far from done. In Season of Dawn, we'll be reintroducing Rusted Lands, bringing Elimination to a static playlist node, and doing a bit of sandbox work to refresh how Crucible gameplay feels. A few weeks back, we previewed the changes for One-Eyed Mask and Recluse, and it is of course worth bearing those in mind, but he says on top of that, we have a slew of new legendary weapons, exotic armor pieces, and subclass changes which we hope will push players to new builds. And he reiterates that as for masterworking materials, we're still passing feedback along to the team. He also says that we hear you on the status of legend PvP rewards right now, because of course there is a pretty distinct lack of competitive rewards outside of kind of using it to hit certain thresholds for quests, right? And DMG finishes by saying, I understand the feedback right now in that things feel slow. We have three month seasonal rotations with a few additional updates within each season, which players find too long for the upkeep and refreshes. While we're passing this feedback to the team, we also have to be sure to balance our resource allocation internally and not rush fixes or changes which may break the experience. And this isn't meant to downplay your feedback in any sense, but I just wanted to say that game development takes time and that we don't want to rush things that could end up creating more issues in the wild. As we have more information on future changes for Crucible, we'll let you know, and until then, we have people working on the Crucible internally, whether it be tweaks to modes, matchmaking, sandbox, or other things. And so in the current kind of state of PvP, I think it's definitely safe to say that Bungie have increased the amount of more significant changes that we get for PvP, but don't get me wrong, really, this is, you know, fairly basic sandbox balance stuff and the quality of life stuff that we need for Crucible over time, right? And so it's good that it's happening, but it doesn't necessarily always fix some of the fundamental problems that I think especially very dedicated PvP players feel in relation to Crucible. So be sure to give us your thoughts and continue to give feedback to Bungie. But otherwise, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on the end game changes, the update changes that they're bringing with update 2.7.0 next week. And of course, Saint 14, what appears to be a pretty cool story potentially right there for next season. Of course, Saint 14 is a very important character in the lore, so I'm really hoping they can deliver that well. And I'm looking forward to kind of getting to see how the loot table works for the Sundial and what we'll generally be spending our time actually doing with the new season of content, right? So we have got a lot of questions that remain, and hopefully we'll discover the answers to many of those on Tuesday. But guys, if you've enjoyed this video, a rating below is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, be sure to get subscribed to see a lot more Destiny content. But as always, thank you very much for tuning in, and whatever you get up to, I hope you guys have an awesome day.